What's up, YouTube? Uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the two little fishies, the Fosband Reactor, uh, pros and cons of the Fosband Reactor, and uh, different ways of using it. Uh, it's a very versatile reactor as far as I'm concerned. Uh, one of my biggest things that I like about it is that it's small and compact compared to most of your reactors. This thing's only about three and a half inches round, and it can handle up to 150 gallons of media which is a plus on my part because I'm working with tight space and I do plan on having three of these reactors and they'll all be inside my sump. Now to go ahead and start these are the two little fishy extension kits uh, that you can get to go on the top of the reactor. Let me go ahead and put this top piece on here and you can see uh, when you put this one on here this is the returned on the outside and inlets on the inside so basically this was is pretty much being in place of the ball valve that I'm using over there so you put this one here uh, depending on the direction that you got the water coming in and out from of course you point it in different ways but that's the standard extension kit so I'm gonna go ahead and take that off and with that being said the yeah, standard extension kit they work out great you can do a lot of things with them as far as uh, hooking them up in different places and doing stuff like that but problem with that is these rubber elbows now they look nice they fit nice they work nice but problem is they don't last long uh, in time you gotta take these elbows and inspect them you can see here when I squeeze it that split now if that splits you're gonna get water everywhere um, you know, if, especially if the reactor is not hanging over a sump or something, uh, you get water all down the side of your tank or or whatnot. Uh, other issue with the reactors are these seals. Now these seals are like two bucks or three bucks. They're replaceable. Uh, if your reactor reactor starts to leak here, uh, it's not a huge deal. I can show you on this one. You can see where it's coming out the side a little bit. So what that is is during maintenance. Um, let's say you're cleaning or, or rinsing out your GFO and you want to exchange it. Be sure to clean out the inside of your cap. Uh, those little pieces of GFO will get on your uh, ring and it'll basically put little cuts and scrapes and stuff like that. They won't have a good seal so that when you turn it on here, you're actually destroying the O-ring and that's why you're getting leaks. So um, having extra elbows on hand and extra O-ring on hand is a good thing but the acrylic itself and the plastic I mean it's pretty strong and durable I haven't had any problems with uh, the inlet and the outlet so uh, it's basically just the rubber components on this reactor that I don't like um, there's a lot of things you can do like this return here is basically made out of the same parts and I got it return into the part of the sump where I want it to return which is over my filter floss um, you can do alternatives like these half inch elbows where you just put some plastic uh, tubing around them and this here is a lot tougher and stronger than a rubber elbow. problem with this is you might develop leaks in between the barbs so I would definitely invest in getting some of these rubber clamps um, if you're going to do it like that. Um, another thing to talk about here is uh, how much flow do these reactors take? Now, say I'm running GFO on this. Uh, GFO requires low flow, and I think the max uh, gallons per hour you can put through these little uh, two little fishy reactors is about 100, 80 to 100. So a perfect pump would be a maxi jet 400 uh, for GFO, maybe a 600 for carbon. Uh, it also depends on how much head pressure you're putting on the pump so if the pump's got to push you know three four feet of tubing I would definitely you know invest in a stronger pump but if you only got a foot or two uh, one of these two pumps this is a maxi jet 400 this is a maxi jet 1200 uh, they should be perfectly fine um, you can also split your say you want to split the maxi jet 1200 and you can you know send the flow to two, two different reactors and save some power and some room in your sump or um, you can also run a combination with these things with carbon and GFO uh, if you go to bulk reef supply 
they show you how to mix their carbon and GFO together. Basically, um, never want to go past a 50-50 ratio. You always want to keep a little more carbon than GFO inside of it um, if you're going to do the blend. Uh, if you're not doing the blend and you're running it separately, also there's, um, I think you're not supposed to fill it up any more than five inches worth of media inside these reactors or you can cause a problem. Uh, as far as getting your media to tumble and fluidize properly. Um, another tip and trick that I got from messing with these things, uh, here in the top, you see how these elbows go on here real nice. Um, the black tubing goes on really nice and that also can connect to the maxi jets. So if you can connect the tube here and connect the tube here, uh, you could just use one of these clamps, stick it on here, and here let me show you first that if you don't put the clamp, this actually comes right off. But if you do use the clamp, um, you can actually lift the pump up by the tube. So the clamps are important too, because uh, I don't know how many times I had uh, kind of a fountain inside of my tank from not clipping this hose on and the water is just shooting up towards the surface of the water and it looks like a fountain. Um, alternatives too, like I said, if you use this plastic tubing, you can actually stick that black tube inside the clear tube that fits the barbs and it'll make a nice tight uh, connection with the top of these things. It's really hard to push them down on there, but um, that's another alternative. Um, Another thing I like to do too, uh, when I'm changing out the media on these things, I like to make sure that they're dry. So that when you put the media inside, it's not all sticking to the sides of the acrylic or the, the cylinder itself. It's actually going down to the bottom and you can see, you know, where your levels uh, are at as far as putting the media inside. Now there's different ways of filling this thing up. Um, I like to put one sponge on the bottom of the GFO. Let me see if I can get this out. It's a little hard doing this with one hand, guys. Let me turn this over. All right, so I like to put one sponge on here. Should have did that first. And then uh, put it in. Then I like to use uh, a funnel. I grab my funnel so that it doesn't fall inside the hole inside there. And I'll grab one cup of GFO and I'll pour it inside my reactor. All right, now once you get it all in there, this uh, one cup is for about 125 gallons and in my total system, it's probably about 120. Uh, when you do introduce GFO to your system, uh, if you're new to it, introduce it slow, don't introduce it fast, uh, add little by little as you go on, uh, just so you don't shock the system itself. And then you put this top piece on, see if I can get it on, there you go. And I also like to follow up with the foam pad on top. Now it's also a good thing too to have some of these extra on hand. I like to use two, this is just preference. Uh, you don't have to use two up top, but I like to. So, once that's all said and done, and you got your reactor filled, so, sorry this is uh, taking long, this is being done in real time. So, uh, don't edit my videos. Uh, okay, so now that this is ready and full, what I'll do is, I'll take it, put it in my sump, going to float a little bit because there's air inside of it and I'll connect my inlet to the reactor and then I'll take my outlet and stick it out the side of the sump to where it's going into this bucket. Now uh, rule of thumb with uh, bulk reef supply GFO they recommend flushing the GFO with at least one gallon of water so I'll slowly turn my knob to fill up the GFO. Now, when filling this stuff up, you don't want to like give it a kick to where it flies all over the place. 
kind of want to fill it up nice and slow. Um, I just think it makes less of a mess and you don't see that orange tint all over the reactor itself. So once I get it up and actually coming out, I'll pick up the speed and rinse out my GFO. Now you notice it's coming out really, really orange. That's uh, typical of the first push, but then as it's going, you'll see it start to clear up. And I do have my bucket marked so I can get it up to the one gallon at least. Um, also, another tip, I had added an extra gallon of salt water before I did this, uh, just so that I don't mess with my oil top off and uh, make it pump in too much fresh water. But after it gets up to the one gallon mark, I'll go ahead and shut it off. As you can see, the water is starting to come out clearly and the GFO is starting to tumble nicely. Slow it down just a little bit and then I'll turn it off. So from there, I'll go ahead and remove my return nozzle. I don't want it to fall inside that gunk. And I'll take the reactor and put it where it's supposed to be. So that's another nice thing about these barb fitting guys. Uh, you get a little playroom versus the hard plumbing and the barbs give you a little you know, extra play as far as folding stuff over and getting it to fit in tight spaces. But you connect this back on, open this back up, and your GFO is now being used. Now I'm going to get down here so you can see the tumble that I get out of my GFO and just how I like it. So you get it moving a little bit just to get some of the air out and then slow it down. Yeah, I don't know if you can really see the movement in the GFO or not. Let me get it loose. Sometimes if you loosen it up, it'll get it moving. Uh, there you go, it's starting to get some tumble action. I don't know if the camera's showing you, but you can see up top it's tumbling. Uh, in the beginning, you'll see a little kind of like burst of uh, GFO coming up to the top, but after a while it starts to settle down and that's the reason why I put two sponges up top uh, to prevent it from coming into my tank. But that's a real time uh, GFO change on a Fosban two little fishies reactor 150. Happy reefing.